last places of their kind left on Earth. Soon, they may only be memories on the pages of a magazine. But just as we are on the brink of losing the spectacular diversity of our natural world, we may be on the verge of a new era in conservation. It is the age of public and private sector partnerships. An idea that was triggered more than a century ago when we almost destroyed it all. There was a place in the American West where the way of life had remained unchanged for thousands of years. Tens of millions of animals once blackened these rolling plains. But by the middle of the 19th century, humankind had left its indelible footprint. With funding from Congress, conservationists led an expedition to survey and document parts of the West before they disappeared. When the Hayden expedition returned, they brought back stunning images of the area. Congress was moved. And in 1872, the United States government created the world's first national park, a place called Yellowstone. Their decision resonated around the world and into the next century. In the early 1990s, maverick conservationist Mike Fay and National Geographic photographer Nick Nichols met in Central Africa to photograph some of the most pristine rainforests left on Earth. Yet even in this remote place, logging and illegal hunting were leaving their grim signature. The hardships of the jungle were relentless, but the experience planted a seed of obsession in Mike and Nick to document as much of this vanishing wilderness as possible. Their objective was even more audacious than that of the Hayden expedition in the 19th century. The team embarked on a journey that would stretch across 2,000 miles and two countries, from eastern Congo to the coast of Gabon, recording everything along the way. What does fresh elephant dung look like? Boop. You know, oh, what is that butterfly species? Boop. Oh, there's another beetle that we haven't seen before. Boop. And I just take everything like that all day. I can make maybe make a hundred, three or four second clips in a day. I spooked him a wee bit. If I don't have all this stuff, you know, it's just a memory. After 15 grueling months, over 200 hours of footage, and countless footworms, the expedition reached the forest's edge. There's just a few little tiny places left on Earth where animals have it to themselves. And this is definitely one of them. For the next two years, the team lobbied to turn the area into a national park. In September 2000, Gabon's president, Omar Banco, surprised them by creating not just one park, but 13, an entire park system. 13 national parks, that was beyond our wildest expectations. And that was the true success of the walk, not, not the walk itself. Bongo's decision was a bold gamble. I think what President Bongo did was very courageous. Let's compare it to the United States. We have 1.4% wilderness. Uh, he very aggressively uh, looked at 10% and has actually enacted that. And not only is it important for protecting the area, but you're talking about protecting people's ability to, uh, to survive and to exist with the land. Bongo's decision inspired the United States to lead a pioneering movement in conservation. Together with Conservation International, the Wildlife Conservation Society, the World Wildlife Fund, and 25 other governments and NGOs they established the Congo Basin Forest Partnership. Their goal is to protect the natural wonders of the Congo Basin while creating economic opportunities for the communities that depend on them. Carrying this mission a step further, a bipartisan group of motivated congressmen founded the International Conservation Caucus to promote good stewardship of natural resources throughout the world. 
Well, the mission is to, uh, is, is to do what we can to work in partnership. We, we had the opportunity of bringing the Congress to be, together uh, to raise the awareness. This is not a Republican or Democrat issue. Uh, this is an issue concerning the planet and concerning all of us. But governments aren't the only drivers in this new conservation trend. The private sector has been heavily involved in several recent initiatives. For every dollar that we put in, that's leveraged to $14 from the private sector. What has that meant? Over the last 15 years, that's meant, you know, 1,500 projects. So doing this in tandem, it's a force multiplier uh, in terms of being engaged around the planet um, on these important issues and it works. One successful example of this public-private partnership is Conservation International's work with Walmart. To achieve sustainable environmental solutions through its supply chains, Walmart has been working with CI and other NGOs to address improvements needed to rebuild depleted fisheries. Their collaboration stresses the importance of fisheries management and the protection of entire marine ecosystems. Since 2003, the World Wildlife Fund has been working with the Coca-Cola Company to help restore and conserve one of the most critical natural resources on Earth, fresh water. From creating the first freshwater map of the world to reintroducing endangered fish species in their historical range. After more than 100 years of absence, WWF and the Coca-Cola Company are committed to conserving the world's most important freshwater systems. In another innovative approach, the Wildlife Conservation Society has partnered with Goldman Sachs to create a 680,000 acre nature reserve on the island of Tierra del Fuego at the tip of South America. The lands are home to the world's southernmost stands of old growth forests as well as unique grasslands, rivers, and wetlands, where spectacular wildlife, including guanacos and colpeo foxes, can be observed. And in Latin America, the Nature Conservancy, with help from many private donors, has contributed $7 million to debt reductions under the Tropical Forest Conservation Act, legislation authored by Rob Portman. Agreements in six countries are leveraging more than $60 million spread over the next decade, protecting tens of millions of acres of tropical forests. There's one thing for sure, and that is that this earth is finite. There's only so much land, so much water, and so much air. And the more we degrade any of the earth, land, or water, the less we have in terms of human existence on the earth. The more we do, the more there'll be to do. The International Conservation Caucus Foundation is doing what it can to push this new trend in conservation. The foundation's definition of good stewardship of natural resources not only focuses on biodiversity protection, but also includes poverty alleviation, conflict avoidance, and regional security. For this spectacular planet and all the life it holds, the clock is ticking. Species and habitat loss is mounting. Only we, as stewards of our natural world, are in a position to protect and extend the legacy of these wild places. Do you realize that humans really need nature? Why? We need nature because it makes us feel intact. And to know that somewhere there's hippos in the surf, this place has got to be there for this earth to be whole.